Hello everybody, this is Kyle of Church and a Budget PH and this video is called The Beginner's Ultimate Guide to Church Sound. Now I'm very excited for this video kasi this will jumpstart you ng mga beginners natin ng mga kasama sa church, mga production, mga sound tech sa pag-start ninyo sa sound journey and not just sa pag-start kundi sa pag-start ng tama. I'm a firm believer that education really is the way for us to do things more efficient and effectively. So it's very important for us to know all of these things that we are smarter than our equipment, that we are able to maximize all of the things that we have and ang mag enable natin sa paggawa neto is for us to know things about our system. So in this video, if you are a new sound tech, this one is for you. If you are a pastor na gustong malaman yung basics ng sound system, this one is for you. And, or if you are just a nerd and you want to learn, gusto mo lang talaga ng refresher na course, this one is also for you. Why not? So if you guys are interested in this video, then check this video out. <laughs> If you are new to this channel, please go ahead and lay your hands on the subscribe button so that you won't miss any video that I'll be posting soon. And please do share and click like until it turns blue below so that more people will be able to watch this video. Let's begin. The very purpose of this course or video right here is to guide our brothers and sisters na mga sound tech or gustong mag-expand sa sound nila na ministry sa churches nila na tama yung ways or tama yung methods, tama yung principles na nalalaman nila about church sound. This is called the Beginner's Ultimate Guide for Church Sound kasi this course right here is for all of our beginners. Yung mga bago pa sa churches or if ikaw may mga questions ka, some of your questions may be answered in today's video. Now, let's start with the overview of our church sound. Our church sound has three basic elements. Number one is input. Okay? And then mixer or the processing, or the brain, and then output. So tatlong simpleng elements lang. Hindi na natin yung complete yung mga bagay dito sa church sound. The most basic elements na nandito are the input, mixer, and output. Very, very basic. Isa-isayin natin to mga kapatid. Alright, so this is the overview of our system. So this is how it looks like. Basically, or ito yung mga workflow namin. For our input, we have our microphone, our guitar and all that. Drums, keyboards, MP3, cell phone, media computer. Papasok yan sa mixer. From the mixer, lalabas yan sa speakers natin. So that's really the very basic or the fundamental na concept for our church na sound equipment. Now, let's go into details kung ano-ano itong -ano input, mixer, tapos output. Kung ano mga nandito. So for the input... We have our microphones. So, lahat ng microphones na meron tayo. Microphone like this. This is a vocal microphone. Pwede ding microphone ng drums. Pwede ding instrument microphones. Yung microphone na nasa amplifier ng mga guitars din yun. Pwede din yun. Choir microphones. Everything na microphone, part yun ng input. Guitars natin. Acoustic guitar, bass guitar, electric guitar, ukulele, violin, why not? Lahat ng string, lahat ng horns, equipment, lahat yun. Basically, all of our instruments, inputs lahat yun. And then... Meron tayong mga MP3 or mga playback na mga devices, cell phones or computers, media computer natin, laptop kung ano-ano pa. MP3, iPad, cassette, lahat. Ano pang gusto niyo diyan? <laughs> Pwede yan la playback devices, input yan silang lahat. So that's our input. So basically these are the things na gusto mong marinig ng congregation mo or sa lahat ng mga tao na nasa service ninyo. So, the way to process that is through the mixer. So, ang nilagay ko dyan is mixer or processing. So, may tatlong klase tayong mixer, analog mixer, digital mixer, and then wireless digital mixer. And we will talk about that in depth later, yung tatlong klaseng mixer na yan. And then for signal processing, this is basically yung mga features na nasa mixer natin. So, may gain, may EQ, may compression, may gate and my effects. Disclaimer lang ako konti, if you're here trying to learn gain, EQ, compression, gate, and effects, unfortunately, I am not able to cover that in this video. I may do another video that will cover solely that, how to build a church mix. But for this video, we're gonna go to the basics only. So, let's move on. Thirdly, is our output. So, dito napapasok yung mga main speakers natin, yung loudspeaker natin, yung subwoofer natin, yung iba may line array system sila that's also part of the outputs. 
And then also part of the outputs is our headphones and our in-ears, which is very interesting. Yung in-ears na yan, that's our, the rising star of church equipments. We will talk about that in depth later on. But again, the overview of this system is may input tayo, may mixer tayo, and then may output tayo. Let's talk about inputs. Ang pinaka-obvious na thing for our input is our instruments. Basic na sa atin yun. Dapat talaga may microphone tayo, dapat may drums tayo, may keyboards, may guitars, and all that. In the church setting, default na yun lahat. Alam natin lahat na dapat mayroon tayong mga musical instruments at mga microphones. So ang gagawin natin ngayon is let's move away from the instruments part and let's go to the cables. Because I believe dito tayo medyo may confusion sa church sound na circle. So let's go to the cables. There are two types of cables. May unbalanced cable tayo at balanced cables. Yung unbalanced cable natin is for our instruments. Or that's why it's also called instrument cables. Yung balanced cables natin on the other hand is para sa microphones natin. That's why it's called microphone cables. Now, what are they for? Unbalanced cables are for instruments. Unbalanced cables, short cable runs only. Maximum of 5 meters yan. Yung balanced cables natin on the other hand, yan ang for microphones natin. Because microphones can handle longer cable runs. Kyle, ano bang mangyayari kung gagawin kong long cable runs yung unbalanced cables? Ang problem na mangyayari dyan is may mga interferences na papasok sa kable na yan because unbalanced cables are susceptible to interferences or basically, nakakasagap siya ng interferences. So, may mag-hum, may mag-buzz, ilaw, possibly radyo papasok dyan sa cable mo kasi yan yung problema pag longer cable runs, nawawalan siya ng quality ang tunog, hindi na siya maganda, yun yung problema ng unbalanced cables. And that is why for longer cable runs, gumagamit tayo ng microphone cables. Probably, may narinig na kayo na tinatawag na snake cable or stage snake. Yun siya yung parang extension wire <laughs> ng mga cables natin sa church. Balance cables po yung ginagamit nun. And dahil ma-extend yung purpose niya, it requires longer cable runs, 10 meters, 20 meters, 50 meters, ang iba 100 meters, ganun. Microphone cables yung ginagamit dun. So basically, in a nutshell, instrument cables, unbalanced cables. Microphone cables, balanced cables. So let's go back to our diagram. So as you can see, yung microphone natin, ang ginagamit dyan is microphone cable. It's very important, the microphone cable. Tapos, yung drums natin, since microphones din yung ginagamit dun, drum mics, microphone cable din yung ginagamit natin. Now, for our guitars, bass, keyboards, MP3 na playback devices like cell phones and laptops, ang ginagamit natin dun are unbalanced cables. Dahil unbalanced cables siya, hindi pwede yung long cable runs, ano ba yung dapat natin gawin dyan? Dito papasok tong black na device na to and that is called a DI box. Ano ba ang purpose ni DI box? Si DI box, kino-convert niya yung unbalanced signal to a balanced signal. So basically, gagamitin mo ng DI box yung unbalanced mo na mga cables na mga signals para maging balanced cable siya. Resulting to, pwede kang mag longer cable runs. So yung gitara mo, yung bass guitar mo, yung keyboards mo, yung playback mo na devices like cellphones and laptops, bilhan mo yan ng DI boxes. One is to one yan, kapatid. Kung stereo yung guitar mo, oh, dalawa sa guitar kasi dalawang output yan. So for every unbalanced signal, may DI box. Very important. So paano yun, Kyle, kung may amplifier ako? Ito yung sagot ko para sa inyo. So don't be confused lang sa color code neto kasi nagbaliktad yung ano, unbalanced niya is red, a balanced line is blue. Anyways, for the sake of concept, discuss natin to. If gusto mo pa rin gamitin yung amp mo, there are two ways. Number one, you plug your instrument to your amp. Tapos if your amp has an XLR out or a balanced out, pwede mo yung gamitin. Tapos from there, amp to mixer agad. So guitar, amp, amp, mixer. Kung meron siyang balanced na output. Pero kung wala, kailangan mo pa rin bumili ng DI box. So yung DI box, ito yung signal. Basic lang. From guitar, DI box, DI box to mixer. And then from DI box, may through yun na feature, lalabas ka doon at ipa-plug mo yun sa amplifier mo. Resulting to, gagamit mo pa rin yung amplifier mo sa stage and then maririnig mo yung sarili mo. So, goods tayo. Di mo kailangan benta yung amp mo. Sige, tuloy natin. That's it for our first element which is the input. Okay? Now, let's move on to our mixer. Let's talk about the mixer or the processing area. Now, we have two 
basic types of mixer. Number one is analog, and then number two is digital. Now, very important etong discussion na to kasi many sound techs have asked me or aspiring sound techs actually asked me ano ba yung mas magandang uh, equipment for their church? Will it be analog or will it be digital? And in this video, pag-uusapan natin yan and I will share to you the pros and cons or advantages and disadvantages and I will tell you my preferred type of mixer and why it is my preferred type. So, dito tayo sa analog mixer. Yung pros neto or advantage is it's less complicated. So, mas madali siyang i-operate. And that is why itong analog mixer, mas commonly used ito sa mga function halls, sa mga restaurant, sa mga schools, sa mga churches, ganun. Kasi it's less complicated. What you see is what you get. Kung anong meron dyan, uh, ikot mo yan, gagawin mo yan, ganun, na- nakokontrol mo yung mixer and it doesn't need so much explanation kasi kung anong meron dyan, magagamit mo yan lahat. And there's no such thing as parang features na hidden features or special features na yan. Kasi kung anong meron dyan, yun na yun. Number two, it's less expensive up front. Mixers like this, wala kasi siyang built-in processing masyado. That's why, because it's really basic, wala siyang masyadong features. So, less expensive. Yun yung resulta nun. But, the disadvantage for analog mixer is, it has lesser capabilities. Kasi nga, basic siya, lesser yung magagawa mo sa kanya. So, less capabilities. Wala siyang masyadong features. And number two, kung mag upgrade ka using your analog setup, mas expensive yun. Kasi, si analog mixer kasi, individual yung effects niya. There is a feature in analog mixer called insert and individual channel yun. So, kunwari, pag may idadagdag ka na effects or Processing dito sa channel na to, sa vocal na channel na to, bibili ka ng device, i-insert mo doon, so that will cost you money. And then sa drums naman, dagdagan naman natin siya ng ano, lagyan naman natin ng compressor, or lagyan naman natin ng feature na to. So bibili ka na naman ng device na yun, i-compress mo yun, ganun. Over time, nagsa-stack up yung expenses mo, expensive yung upgrades niya. Is it worth it? Maybe for some it is worth it, but for a beginner church and for us uh, church setting, I personally think that it's not that efficient. So let's go to digital mixer. Ano ba yung advantages ng digital mixer? Number one, it has more capabilities. Ayun, so nandun lahat yung capabilities na kailangan mo na may EQ lahat and individual yun, may compressor, may gate, may lahat ng processing nandun. Well, depende na lang kung ano pa yung offer ng mixer na mabibili nyo or meron dyan sa market. But most of the time, nandun na lahat ng processing tapos per channel siya. And then number two, it's more customizable. Ano bang meaning nun? If you are so particular with color coding, ayun, labeling of channels, ganon. Pwede mong ma-program yun. Like ito, i-label mo na bass, ito, i-label mo ng guitar, change natin color, pink yung ano, blue yung bass, ganon sa controls mo. That's very efficient. Mas mabilis tignan yung mixer mo, mas yung workflow mo, mas okay. Tapos very importantly, nakaka-save ka ng presets. Ano ba yung meaning ng presets? Kunwari, yung first service mo, eto yung preset kasi sa first service mo may violin, ganun. Tapos may trumpets and horns, ganun. Pero sa next service mo, may choir. Kung analog ka mga kapatid, mano-mano mo yun ganun eh. After ng service, ganun eh. I-adjust mo na naman ulit. Tapos pag second service, adjust mo na naman ulit. But kung digital ka na mixer, pwede mong gawin, mag-save ka ng preset. Okay, eto yung first service na setup ko, save. Tapos second service, setup mo, save. It will allow you to have multiple setups with just one click of a button. So pag first service, click mo mo yun, pok, labas na agad. Pag second service, click mo yun, labas na agad. Maganda tong feature na to if marami kayong sound tech sa church nyo. So basically, may preset ako. Kunwari, ako yung nagmi-mix. Lalabas ko yung preset ko, yung mga EQ ko dyan, mga ano-ano. Sa akin yun, i-customize ko yun according to my liking. Pag si Bob naman yung magmi-mix sa church nyo, or si Juan naman, o si Pedro, ganun, pwede din silang mag-add ng mga mixes nila dun sa mixer nyo because it's customizable because of its digital na feature. It's basically parang computer siya doon. But the disadvantage of this is it's more complicated. Bakit siya more complicated? More complicated siya kasi nga marami siyang features. And kung maraming features, marami kang dapat aaralin. But I think this is a better problem than not being able to do what you need to do kasi kulang yung gamit mo. Mas okay na ako dun sa marami kang pwedeng gawin na aaralin mo kesa wala ka nang maaral kasi wala na siyang kayang gawin. For me, con siya or disadvantage siya na it's complicated but it's actually good for us kasi marami siyang features na pwedeng gawin. Number two, all-in purchase. So kung mag-digital mixer ka, medyo limited yung upgrades mo for the reason na um, kung ano meron dyan, since all-in purchase siya, yan na yun. Meron, may upgrades ka naman ng konti, pero konting-konti na lang talaga. Parang hindi mo na pwedeng baguhin yung system. If that's it, 
then that's it. All-in purchase na siya. And then kung gusto mo mag-upgrade kasi hindi na niya kayang gawin, ang probable na gagawin dito is bibili ka talaga ng bagong digital mixer. Which is something naman na you can work around with kasi mag upgrade ka naman talaga if time comes. But here's the thing. In my church, we don't use an analog mixer. We use a digital mixer. Why? Because of its capabilities. Mas marami siyang channels, mas marami siyang inputs, tapos mas marami siyang features, ganun, na nakaka-serve sa kailangan namin as a church. Ginagamit ba namin lahat ng features ng mixer na to? Not necessarily, kasi di naman lahat kailangan gamitan talaga. Just because it's there, doesn't mean na kailangan mo siyang gamitin, okay? <laughs> but the thing is, it serves us really well kasi lahat ng kailangan namin for our our church sound kaya ng mixer namin. And this is what we use. It's not even your traditional digital mixer na may faders and knobs. It's actually a wireless digital mixer. So, bakit eto? Ang ginamit namin is wireless digital mixer kasi it's cheaper than your regular digital mixer na yung talagang full-size digital mixer na may knobs and faders. It's cheaper because removed yung knobs and faders. Actually, yun na yung mixer, oh. puro inputs and outputs lang siya. And we control it using an iPad. It's cheaper, it has more channels, it has more features, it has the feature of a digital mixer. And this thing right here is really appropriate for our church setting. That's why ito yung binili namin. Some of my mixer recommendations are the Behringer XR18. That is our first mixer actually. I recommend ko talaga yan because we owned one. And then the Soundcraft UI24R, that is the mixer that we are using until now. For me, these are my recommendations kasi I have personal experience dito sa mga mixer na to and I have proven it and I, it stood the test of time for us. You know, yung Behringer XR18 binigay na namin sa isang church dito na friend namin and they're fine with it. Until now, yun pa rin yung ginagamit nila. Ganun. It has been there and it is actually really dependable. It's durable and it stands the test of time. You know, so I recommend that. You can explore other brands also like Allen & Heath, Presonus and all of these things. But for me, these are my mixer recommendations. So, let's now move on to the next one kasi tapos na tayo sa input, tapos na tayo sa mixer. Let's now go to the output. Let's talk about output. For our outputs, may dalawang kategory siya. One is FOH, that is for our crowd, that is for our congregation para marinig tayo ng mga congregants natin, marinig tayo ng mga tao. And then number two is monitoring para marinig natin yung mga sarili natin para hindi tayo bingi, hindi tayo unaware sa mga nangyayari or pinagtutugtog natin dyan. We need monitoring also. So FOH is for the crowd or for the congregation and then monitoring is for ourselves. Now, the two basic na elements ng FOH are the mains or the main speakers, yung nasa stand na ganun. And also, the subs, okay? Which is yung nasa sahig most of the time. So, yung mains natin, yun yung mid tsaka highs na tunog ng system natin. And it's actually called mains kasi ito talaga yung main speaker natin. Dito natin pinapatunog yung most ng sounds natin. And then yung subwoofer, yun yung supplement natin for our low ends kasi it's designed for the low ends na tunog ng sound natin. And then, the monitoring, which is the floor monitors or the wedges, and then the in-ears. Now, the wedges, Yes, yun yung pinaka-traditional natin na setup ng monitoring. So, lahat ng concert, lahat ng mga venue, function hall, meron yan. May live band ka na events, meron talagang wedges. That's the very traditional. But, one thing na gusto ko i-discuss ngayon, which we will be going to in-depth later on, is it is in-ears kasi. Kasi, rising star to, this is the thing that is going to help us really greatly sa church natin na setup, both in efficiency and effectiveness. So, let's talk about it. This is how it would look like sa pinaka-diagram natin sa system. So, may mains dyan, main speaker. And then, sa baba niya, may subwoofer. Itong mga speakers na to is for our crowd, our congregation. And then, we have the floor monitor for us and the in-ears for us. So, siguro you're thinking about this just as all other people are thinking about this. Ano ba yung priority natin dyan sa system na yan? So, for our outputs, our priority really is, you guessed it right, the main speakers. Okay? That is why it's called main speakers kasi yan yung main priority natin. So I really urge you, I really encourage you, invest much on the main speaker. Sulitin nyo talaga to. Huwag kayong magtipid dito sa speaker na to. Kasi ito talaga yung pinaka-main na speaker na mag produce sa sound nyo as a band, as as a, basically as a church. Dito nyo maririnig lahat. Ganun. So huwag nyo tipirin yan. And then, yung next dyan is your subwoofers. Kasi, now... The subwoofers dito, yung nasa baba, I would say that for small churches, that is optional. Okay, let me explain why. Kasi for small churches naman, 
you can hear music really well. Tapos hindi naman kailangan na medyo spread yung tunog nyo. Kasi, again, it's a smaller setting. Ganun, medyo kaya lang ng speakers natin yung mga low end. So, hindi na kailangan na medyo complicated yung setup natin. But if you are a mid-size or large church, subwoofer is really a must. Kasi, may limit lang yung loudspeakers natin. We have to supplement it with a kick, with a mm. ganon. And your subwoofer will allow you to do that. Sige, for our monitoring, I would say you can prioritize a floor monitor at least isa lang, isa lang muna, and then gradually complete your in-ear monitoring for each of your band. And I'm gonna explain that later kung bakit floor monitor, but you should prioritize in-ear monitoring system. So, at this point, we're gonna talk about a very important issue, which is Passive versus active speakers. So, siguro narinig nyo to. Pastor, ano ba yung dapat bilhin natin? Passive ba talaga o active na speakers? So, this is the thing right here. So, I have three criteria that I want to talk to you about in this video. Setup, portability, and cost. So, ano ba yung passive speaker at ano yung active speaker? So, basically, ito yung mangyayari. Si speaker natin, tutunog yan through an amplifier. The reason why tumutunog si speaker natin is dahil may amplifier siya. Now, for passive speakers, wala siyang built-in amplifier. Meaning, separate si amplifier kay speaker. Now, for an active speaker, isa lang silang dalawa. Merong amplifier si speaker. Ganun yung nangyayari. So, built-in na. One purchase na silang dalawa. Now, let's talk about this. For setup, I think the winner here is the active speaker. Bakit? Kasi plug and play lang siya. You don't need a lot of extra setup dito. Magpa-plug ka lang ng microphone cable from your mixer na main out to the speaker doon na active speaker. Tapos yun na, extension wire na lang para may power siyang ganun. Tapos tutunog na yung speaker mo. So walang masyadong mahirap na setup dyan. But for a passive na system, from your mixer, pupunta ka pa ng amplifier. Tapos from amplifier, pupunta ka pa ng speaker mo. So medyo mas marami kang gagawin sa setups. The easier way or the easier route for setup is active speakers. For portability, same thing. The winner here is active speakers. Bakit? Speaker lang dadalhin mo. Wala ka ng additional na amplifier. It's very simple. And then number two, Cost, I believe that active speakers are cheaper than passive speakers. Ito ha, relative sa quality and sa portability and sa sound and all of that and sa technology na meron siyang now offer. Cheaper talaga si active speakers. So for me, if I were to suggest or recommend to you beginning churches or even mid-sized churches, go with active speakers. This will help you uh, maximize your time, be effective and be efficient. And um, simpler po yung buhay natin pag ito yung mga speakers natin. So let's go to the next one which is floor wedge versus in-ears or floor monitors versus in-ears. Ang floor monitors, etong nandito. So from mixer, meron kang speaker na nakaharap sa musician. In this way, naririnig mo yung sarili mo. So ito yung nangyayari dito. And then for in-ears, meron ka ditong Mixer, from your mixer, may headphone amplifier ka. And then from headphone amplifier, meron kang in-ears. Now, for setup, I would say, panalo si floor wedge. Kasi, simpler eh. From mixer, especially pag active yung wedge mo, plug mo lang agad, tapos na. Wala nang maraming gagawin. But for portability, panalo si in-ears dito. Kasi, etong headphone amplifier, maliit lang yan. Parang cellphone lang yan kalaki. Tapos in-ears mo. So, pwede ba siyang ilagay sa bag, ilagay sa pocket mo, ganun. But this wedge right here, it's not very portable. Kasi, isang speaker yan. Isang buong speaker yan. So, portability-wise, panalo si in-ear monitors. And lastly, which is most important since we are church on a budget, you know, PH, in-ear monitoring system is cost-effective. Let me explain to you why. If you have a drummer, a bassist, a guitarist, dalawa kasi may acoustic pa, and then a keyboard player, five yan, tapos may lima ka na singers, that's a total of 10 performers on stage. Kailangan may 10 ka rin na floor monitors. Kasi dapat marinig niyo yung sarili nila individually, independently. So, palagay nilang natin, 20,000 yung isang speaker. That's 20,000 times 10 people. That's 200,000 pesos for in-ear monitoring system. That's so expensive. If you go for the in-ears na route, here's what you're gonna spend for. The headphone amplifier, which will cost you around 1,000 pesos, less than 1,000 pesos. Yung mga ano lang, yung basic lang talaga. And then in-ears, which will cost you around 1,000 pesos. So let's just say, 1,000 plus 1,000 is 2,000 pesos per person times 10. That's only 20,000 pesos. So ang in-ears is 10% lang sa floor monitors and setup. So I think we have a winner here. Cost-wise, in-ear monitoring system is really the way to go. So I would recommend always 
go for in-ears, prioritize that sa churches ninyo. Am I saying na hindi na tayo bibili ng floor wedge? I still think that floor monitors are very important kasi may preacher tayo, si pastor. Di naman nag i si pastor. That'd be weird kung mag i si pastor. Ang mangyayari doon, siya yung gagamit ng wedge. Siguro bilhan niyo si pastor ng isa, dalawa, ganun. So that's 40,000 pesos for your pastor. You know, love your pastor and all that. And then all of the other people sa band, mag i na kayong lahat. For vocalists, pwede kayo mag-wired na lang muna for a start. And then if may budget na, ganun, okay, then go for wireless in-ears. But that's actually relatively expensive. But if you can, why not? But for a start, do wired in-ears, headphone amplifier, and the in -ear monitor and then you're good to go. Again, this is our basic setup. Mains, subwoofers, floor monitors, and then in-ears. That's it right there. So tapos na tayo mag-usap regarding input, mixer, and output. We have come to an end for this video right here and here's how I'm going to end it. I'm gonna show you my church recommendation or church sound recommendation which is this thing right here. For your inputs, Make sure that you have everything you need. Your vocal microphones, mic ni pastor, yung instrument niyo, yung guitar, bass, keyboards, whatever inputs you have, your media laptop and all that. Alam niyo na yan, very basic yan. And then make sure that all of your unbalanced cables or unbalanced signals like your guitars, keyboards and all that may direct boxes sila. So secure everything, tas may cable lahat, microphone cables. And then make sure, number two, that you have a mixer. My mixer recommendation, again, is a wireless digital mixer. I would say this over and over again. It's the most efficient you can have. With all of the functionalities, the features that you need for your service, nandyan na siya lahat. Packed yung mixer na yan. So wala na kayong hahanapin pa, nandyan na lahat. That's a good way to start your church sound. And then, focus on your main speakers. It's called main kasi yan yung main priority ninyo. And then, if you're a mid-size or big church, add a subwoofer. That's very important. And then, for your monitoring, have a hybrid of both in-ears and floor wedges. In-ears for your musicians and your singers. And then, wedge for your pastors and all of the exhorter and hosts that you may have for your church. So that is it right there, the beginner's ultimate guide to church sound. If this video helped you and you have found value in this, please support this channel by laying hands on the subscribe button so that you won't miss any video that I'll be posting very soon. And please click the like button until it turns blue so that more people will be able to see this. Down below is a link for my recommended gear, or basically that's my gear list right there. You can use that as a guide for your purchases sa Church Nino so that it will be more easy. And hey, there are links right there that are affiliate links. I would really appreciate if you would purchase through those links because I will earn commissions from there. Wala naman tong additional uh, expense or price. May commissions lang talaga ko. And that's one way to support this video so that I could make more videos like this. And if you wanna support me personally, buy me coffee. My Gcash number is down below. Or you wanna buy matcha for my wife because she loves it. Gcash number down below. We love you guys and I hope to make more of these videos soon. So this is Kyle of Church on a Budget PH that aims to help churches become efficient and effective. See you guys soon and peace.